Alright everyone, and welcome to a very special FTW WrestleMania pre-show coming to you live March 31st, 2012 from Joe's basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you smell what the super drain is cooking. This is down here. Uh, Alright, with me, uh, I'm Harrison. With me as always is Joe. Say hello, Joe. Oh, the smell. <laughs> Rob, say hello, Rob. Hey. Kevin, say hello, Kevin. What's up? Mike is with us from PW Torch. Say hello, Mike. Hey, guys. How's it going? And Garvin is manning the board. Say what's up, buddy. Hey. All right. So tonight is our very special WrestleMania, WrestleMania pre-show. Uh, not only are we going to be talking about WrestleMania, but we are also going to be talking about the inaugural class of the FTW Hall of Shame. That's right. You nominated, you voted, and we decided... We have your class coming up, but first, if you're new to the show, please check out ftwpodcast.com for more about us and how to get involved in tonight's show, as well as upcoming shows. You can reach out to us on Twitter, Facemail, Voicemail, uh, I'm sorry, Twitter, Facebook, Voicemail, Text Message, Email. We're bringing in your comments and questions throughout the show, so if you want to be heard, this is your opportunity. Tonight's live chat can be found at ftwpodcast.com slash live. You can also email questions to questions at ftwpodcast.com, and if you're on Twitter, use hashtag ftwlive, and we'll be bringing you in throughout the entire night. Now it's time, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to officially announce the inductions to, to, into the FTW Hall of Shame Class of 2012. And first, according to your votes for wrestler, ladies and gentlemen, Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gilbert is... Be a diva, Jill. <laughs> Uh, Dwayne Gill was WWE's answer to Goldberg, a parody mocking WCW's then uh, largest star. Uh, he dicked around for a couple years under his own name and teamed with Barry Hardy. And look, you don't care. The only the guy was just a lame attempt at WWE to mock WCW's biggest guy by having him win the lightweight heavyweight championship and then come out the sparklers, a can chant over the speakers, and some fire extinguishers. It was funny at first. At first. It got ridiculously old quick. And apparently you all agree because not only did you nominate him, but you voted him in as the honorary first inductee into the FTW Hall of Shame. Who's first? You are, Gilberg. You are. So is anybody <laughs> really surprised at that? I hated that gimmick. Not at all, man. That is just it's just bad. Yeah, it, you hit it right on the nail, Harrison. I mean, the thing was horrible. I mean, because before they gave him the title, I mean, he had like this horrible losing streak. It, like you said, it was just uh, it was just WWE's lame attempt to mock uh, Goldberg. What's funny is they gave him that light heavyweight championship and they forgot that they gave it to him. He went around the country <laughs> defending it at independent shows and finally, like a year later they brought him back and jobbed him out to Christian to give him the title to kind of restart yeah. that light heavyweight division. Yeah, it also, uh, I mean, that, that, that's pretty funny. They just forgot all about him and their title. Yeah, yeah I, I, remember, I remember that being annoying, but I remember that he, his continual... I mean, because you knew that, you knew, basically when he first came out, it was like, oh, this is funny, this is funny, this is funny. The first time he lost, like, this is funny. Then when they brought him out again, you knew, oh my god, we're going to see this guy a hundred and All day. <laughs> and he's going to lose every time. I mean, it was just, it was going to be such a terrible, terrible thing to see. But it was hilarious when they first did it. Yeah, the first time, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, it's like that first time you want to do it, but then... Yeah, it's like seeing Big Show imitate Hulk Hogan. It's funny, but you sure as fuck yeah. don't want to see it keep going. Yeah, exactly. You know, let's not be. Who, who did he used to? He used to come out with Blue Meanie and who else? Uh, yeah, it was the job he, spot, right? Yeah, that was uh, it. Yeah, El Snow and yeah, Blue yeah, Meanie. Meanie. It was a fourth guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember who the other guy was. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It was the job squad. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah that's why they're the job squad. <laughs> oh, that's right, Gilbert. That's right, Gilbert actually got his only ever win was because of Blue Meanie. It was over. His Gilbert's only ever win was against Goldberg. Because, or not Goldberg, Gold Dust. Yeah. Because Blue Meanie was feuding with him and Blue Meanie came out and helped him win. That was his only ever win as Gilbert. <laughs> he, he, came, he came out as Blue Dust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, your uh, second. How do, how do I remember that? <laughs> well, it's one of those traumatizing experiences. You have the palsy, man. You. you have the palsy. <laughs> What's the capital of Maine? I have no idea. Who did? Who helped Gilbert beat Goldust? Oh, that was Blue Minions Blue Dust back in February 1999. <laughs> <laughs> if it actually is February 1999, it probably is. Nice like an encyclopedia. Okay, we we'll have, have you face off against Bill Martell for use of knowledge. It was so creepy. <laughs> yeah, the, the fact that the guy could 
reach back like 10 years and remember the cover of an individual rest WWE magazine. You know it was sitting right to his right-hand side. In yeah, the he just, he just, he just, you know when he didn't wash his hands? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised he didn't get more mad at me for that comment. All right, your second nominee for the FTW Class Hall of Shame is... Not a nominee, not a nominee, inductee. Oh, so you're inductee, thank you, Kevin. Is uh, I really wish we had a drum roll. This is what awesome. Hold on. Boom. <laughs> David. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> David Flair. Uh, David Flair is your second uh, inductee. He is the son of Ric Flair. He was the heir to the father's throne in the wrestling business. He even picked up the U.S. and tag team championships. But overall, his obvious lack of interest in actually becoming a wrestler really showed as he continued to have just one terrible match after another. Uh, He had a brief stint in WWE when WCW was bought. Then he was sent to OBW and trained. Then he was brought up twice, wants to be beaten by The Undertaker in a segment. And then against, and then again, excuse me, to be beaten by The Undertaker in an actual match. Otherwise, WCW was his, quote, peak in the business, and it's all thanks to the creative of what the creative writing of one Vince Russo. David received the most votes and is your pick for the first class of the FTW Hall of Shame. And nobody would have known who David Flair was in WCW either if he wasn't uh, associated with Daphne and uh, Crowbar. I was going to say, I, earlier today, I watched a clip of Daphne and David Flair get the crap kicked out of them with Crowbar coming to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> At a gas station in the West. It was wonderful. I miss you, Daphne. Yeah. Come back. Yep. When it comes to David Flair, there's really two things that I remember about him. One is in 2008 when Ric Flair was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Anytime they showed David Flair, he was just crying his eyes out <laughs> every time he's on. The, like, he'd just be sitting there in the audience. He was at WrestleMania, you know, watching JBL versus Finley, and he's just sitting there crying. And <laughs> the, the, the other thing is he hooked up with Stacey Keebler. Yes. George <laughs> Clooney is right now getting his sloppy seconds. Oh, my <laughs> Yeah, but what? But I don't care if it's sloppy or not. That's hot shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, 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 I won't like, care. I remember exactly zero things about David Flair, and that's exactly <laughs> the way I would like it. <laughs> the fact that you hooked up with Stacey Keebler, that's an excellent point. Well, like, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, yeah they, they almost got married, too. I, they were engaged to get married, and you know whatever happened, they broke up, and oh, geez, probably- before Stacey moved on to George Clooney. Well, she probably woke up and realized she was sitting next to David Flair. Well, she's probably <laughs> tired of Ric Flair hitting on her and trying to <laughs> <Sam's Yeah. laughs> Woo! Probably. Uh, all right. So, uh, next up, uh, your uh, inductee uh, is, drumroll please. <laughs> Mike Adam Lee. <laughs> My, from American Gladiators to WWE, Mike Adamley brought his own style of commentary to the television audience, although somewhere in between Gladiators and wrestling, Mike Adamley had to have had a stroke and then ended up in WWE television, fumbling through ECW commentary. Soon, so after some serious flubs, uh, Jeff Harby and some batch catch raises, I remember this one, Jamaican me crazy, he was thrust into the Raw GM role, giving away to Adam Lee's originals, uh, such as the championship scramble match. Uh, but he's being inducted into the FTW Hall of Shame as the first man in the commentator wing. So congratulations, Mike. Mike isn't here to accept his award today, so Joe will be accepting it for him. Yes, um, thank you. Um, this is going to go in my bathroom next to my plunger. It's <laughs> um, prestigious. <laughs> yeah, do you want to know what else is sitting there? Nothing. <laughs> Don't go <laughs> house. Nothing has the honor. Um, yeah, congrats to Mike Adamley. I would still like to see Mike Adamley come back. Are you it. serious? I would. I would love to see him come back into a commentating role because it was terrible. It was. Uh, hard. Hey. Uh, I- Adam Lee or Booker T, I'm going to pick Joe, Adam Joe also likes the Mexicals. Let's keep this in mind. True. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, all right, well, where do you guys stand? Adam Lee or uh, Booker T? I would rather have Adam Lee as a commentator. Yeah! Woo, woo, woo. I, I agree. Uh, if you look at Adam Lee, he was like the lovable failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You knew he was you... awful, but that's why it was awesome. <laughs> And, and he tried. I mean, you know, the the guy generally 
I got the impression that, you know, the guy was generally trying, was generally working hard and was trying to make himself better. He just couldn't do it for one reason or another. The greatest commentary team. Mike Adamley and John Laurinaitis. Oh, God. Oof. God. <laughs> It'd be better. You would have to tune in just to watch that train wreck each week. Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't turn away. It's so bad. Welcome to Superstars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if we could just have them for one match every week, the Kofi Kingston match. Yes. It'd be perfect if you <laughs> drop like six or seven Jamaican me crazies. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Idis Lord would try to argue with him, but he couldn't because he can't talk. <laughs> well, no, you could. You just couldn't hear him. You just, you exactly. Uh, well, I mean, we would all end up being future in dev heads. Let's be honest. <laughs> Fans of John Laurinaitis. Anyway. Uh, all right. Uh, next up, for the FTW Class of Hall of Shame, in the manager role, drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you smell what the rock is cooking. <laughs> Simon Dean. Once upon a time, he was Hollywood Nova of the BWO, but Simon Dean earned his nomination in the FTW Hall of Shame managing the short-lived Jiminy Tag Team. Jiminy. J- that, that's not how you spelled it. Yes, it is. Oh, God, it was terrible. Uh, a personal... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, I remember this now. A personal trainer managing a couple of Jim Rant bodybuilders. Yep, douchey Simon Dean rode to the ring on a Segway. That was awesome. Tool and your nomination and your inductee for the FTW Hall of Shame class of 2012. I remember that now. God, this guy was an ass. <laughs> they do anything with him, man. It was... They couldn't do anything with him. He was an ass. He was so terrible. Okay, him or got... Constantino. Him. I'm sorry. Simon Dean or Rico, guys? Rico. Yeah. Really? Yeah, really? Rico. Come on. Sam. Yeah, I would have to go with Rico, Sick, too. What? Oh, well. Uh, I'm a little so Simon Dean deserves to be inducted. I'm just saying Rico was really that terrible. Yeah, uh, I guess. Oh, I like, okay, I'll give you, I like Rico better than Simon Dean. That's all I'm saying. Billy and Chuck, that's who Rico managed. I mean, at least you had some entertainment factor there. Yeah, that's true. Anybody have their favorite Simon Dean moments? Anybody? Yeah, I, I got a little uh, true story about Simon Dean. Oh God, you back in... stories. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I, w- I went to a Cleveland All-Pro Wrestling show back in, I want to say it was January 2001, and Nova was making an appearance. I don't know who he was wrestling, but I was sitting there in the front row, and he's he's going, or no, it was uh, after ECW closed. That would have been like March or something. So he's wrestling, and he's standing there on the apron, and I look up at him, and I just yell, Welcome to the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> He put his head down in shame, and I swear to God, the next day I'm reading on one of the wrestling pages that he signs with WWE. So I, I I feel like maybe I I was a part of that. He he realized that I was right. He didn't want that to happen, and he called WWE that next day. So, <laughs> wow! So you're, you're welcome, Simon Dean, for your career <laughs> <laughs> and your induction in our Hall of Shame. Yes. <laughs> awesome. That is so awesome. All right. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are at the last inductee to the FTW Class of Hall of Shame, Class of 2012. And I'm going to read it off, and there will be no surprises, no drum roll necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, who else could be in this other than the man himself, Vince Russo? Yeah. <laughs> only, 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 only added to this is his seminar that we discussed recently. So that might have put him just over the top for this year's nomination. Hands down. All right, so here we go. Quick bio. Russo contributed to some of the most edgiest and controversial storylines that was the Attitude Era in WWE. His storylines included sexual content, on-camera profanity, on-air shoots, and lots and lots of swerves. When he jumped shit to WCW, he brought the same style over, which at the same time was new and uncharted territory. But he quickened the pace. Constant heel and face turns, fake retirement, tire changes. Uh, title changes could it have worked maybe but then he went out of his way to attack wwe on air with such character with characters such as oklahoma he also booked himself to defeat goldberg and win the title and he made an object on a pole a meme for helping to destroy wcw and for almost destroying tna we honor vince russo as an official inductee to the ftw class of hall of shame and i gotta be honest the mvp as well <laughs> <laughs> If we ever get a physical structure, I'm sure he can be the night security guard. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, he's getting his bronze <laughs> bust out the thing. You know, whenever they do that for uh, in the Baseball Hall of Fame, whenever they do the really big guys, they get their bronze bust. He's getting one, hands down. All right, so why don't we do it? Everyone's favorite Vince Russo moment. Seminar. <laughs> yes, I second that. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've got to go with the seminar. But, you know, what stands out is like what you said in his bio, Harrison. Um, when I look at Russo's career, I think he never really got over the bitterness of being fired by the WWE. And in trying to get even with the WWE, he destroyed WCW and nearly destroyed TNA. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he, I mean, when he wanted to book himself to defeat Goldberg and win the title, I mean, you, you can't think of anything more ego driven than that. I mean, it's fucking. I always, thought, I always thought it was hilarious when he would come down to the ring in that Pope Mobile dr- driven by Jeremy no. Borash. I I've thought got, that was hilarious. I've got another, I, I, I've got another Vince Russo moment. My favorite Vince Russo moment was uh, way back in the early days of TNA when uh, TNA let Roddy Piper into the ring and Piper called Russo out. And, uh, you know, basically got into Russo's face and said, was it in your script to kill my cousin, Owen Hart? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, I mean, I mean, he got, I, I, I mean, Piper just got so pissed off. And it was nice to finally see a wrestler finally get pissed off and say let me tell you what you've done to our business let me tell you what you've done to everything i've worked for and everything that the young guys in the back are working for yeah it was finally nice to see a wrestler stand up to him be the voice of reason yes sir all right yes my my favorite moment was the uh judy bagwell on a pole match (laughs) (laughs) whose idea was the pepper on a pole match Alex he, he, dog with Big Show. <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, there was also the kennel from hell match. That oh, was, you beat me to it. Crap, <laughs> dogs crapping at ringside. What, what, what might be the worst match of all time? Oh, that was abysmal. <laughs> all right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You're not you're inductees to the 2012 FDW Hall of Shame. Gilbert, David Flair, Mike Adamley, Simon Dean, and Vince Russo. How about a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Woo hoo! All right, time to wipe your asses. <laughs> the ceremonial FTW slow clap. All right, so that's done and gone. Now it's time to talk about WrestleMania uh, coming up tomorrow. In case you don't know, I will get your pay per view buys in now before they run out. Uh, <laughs> as always, every year WrestleMania uh, brings out the rumor mill and they get kind of crazy, especially the day before. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a quick run through of the WrestleMania rumors, discuss them because uh, it could be kind of fun. Uh, number one, the big one, is that like last year, they're going to be announcing the main event to WrestleMania 29 next year. God, I hope not. Yeah, see, that's a, that's where my problem is. It's like I understand they tested the waters with announcing, you know, Cena Rock a year in advance. But what if somebody dies, gets sick, can't wrestle? I mean, dies. Well, no, they got really close with Cena having that car accident uh, a few weeks ago. Like they ran into the issue of, well, what happens? You know. Yeah, I mean, especially this close. Like to me, that's a bad idea. They, if they're going to do it, they should do it for huge matches. Well, huge matches. I, I mean, and as we've been talking about on the uh, on the podcast, one of the problems with this is you know Rock started off really strong. You know, in promos he w- he was much like the Rock that he was before he left, but then he just seemed to run out of gas. And Cena's just been owning him um, in promos since then. And you know, I mean, it's it's really really hard to take a feud, set it 365 days in advance and say, okay, you have to keep this going and you have to keep people interested in this all year. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to ask out of two wrestlers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, A couple other announcements that are coming up. I'm just going to do 
three that are coming up, and then one that's kind of a big one afterwards. Uh, Austin and CM Punk. Now, these two have been going at it on Twitter, and Austin has repeatedly said he's got one match left in him. I disagree. I think he's going to explode like Kevin Nash. Uh, <laughs> he's basically said he's got one match. Come on, the dude's legs are nothing at this point. Uh, even when he retired, he was on his last legs, literally. And think about how long, I mean, and now he's going to have ring rust on top of that, you know? Uh, he said that he wants he has one match left in him, and he's openly had said that he wants it to be CM Punk, and they've been going back and forth on Twitter. Uh, another one is uh, possibly Batista making an appearance, as if anybody cares, but that's out there. And the other one is, uh, this one's kind of semi-obvious, which is HBK versus Triple H for next year. So, of those three, which do you think is the most likely, and that you'd want to see? HBK Triple H is no question the most likely. I I, I said previously I think it's going to happen. I still think it will. Um, I, I I think Sean doesn't. I I, I definitely think Sean wants one more match. You, you know, um, Scott stated that he thinks he can do it. I I, I don't know. I, I said that I don't think he can do it. I said I don't want to see it. But you want me to say which one I think is going to happen? I definitely think that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, Austin CM Punk could be interesting, but my problem with that is they're ignoring uh, a storyline that started earlier because uh, when Tough Enough was coming up, they had Miz try to pick a fight and challenge Austin to a match. Um, so I don't see how you can do Austin CM Punk because without addressing that, because Miz would have to just to keep his character consistent would have to come up and say, well, what about me? Um, well, that's when you have CM Punk versus Miz. Winner gets to face Austin. There you go. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, it gets around it because, I mean, if anything, WWE has no problem either, one, writing off the Miz, or two, abandoning storylines. So there's two solutions right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, sadly, I have to agree with uh, Kevin on this. If any of them were going to happen, I think uh, it's HBK... Uh, Triple H, but I don't want to see it. All right. Well, what about you, Mike? Uh, as a fan of wrestling, I do want to see Triple H versus HBK. As a fan of HBK, I want to see him stay retired. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's happy with his retirement, and I, I think it would be more of them asking him to come out of retirement than him wanting to come out of retirement. You hear that, um, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Uh, actually, I, I really see Austin and CM Punk happening next year. Uh, my problem with that is you would almost you would have to turn CM Punk heel to do that, and I think he's on such a roll as a babyface right now. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think oh, I, I, I think Austin I mean, to, could to, do the, could do the heel role. I mean, he, oh, he, Austin was supposed to be a heel. He the crowd just liked him as the crowd just cheered for him despite what he did. Mm-hmm. Well, so. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, Austin could come in and say, you know, yeah, I'd, you know, I'd like to be the heel for this, but it, it would just make more sense with CM Punk doing the straight edge gimmick against the beer drinking Steve Austin, and I don't think a crowd anywhere would boo Austin no matter what he did to try to be a heel. Yeah, that's true. Especially with Jericho going on about how uh, you know CM Punk is, you know, his dad was an alcoholic or whatever, uh, you know, all that stuff. It, it would make sense to do that, but. I'm like I, I, I gotta disagree. I don't think that they'd even have to identify either of them as baby faces or heels because right now it, it just seems like of the two guy, those two guys just kind of transcend those roles. I mean, they're just gonna go out and do their thing, and you'll cheer for whoever. It'll be, you know, you'll 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 pop when CM Punk uh, cuts a promo. You'll Rock pop when um, Austin cuts a promo. Uh, what do you want? What do you think, Joe? <laughs> Catches me when I'm checking in some other shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like Austin CM Punk, I, I could see it happening. It's just I don't. Fuck you. Uh, I'm in the Austin, room now, bitch. I know. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn it, he screwed up my entire flow. Um, no, Austin CM Punk could be a good match. I don't know if it's a WrestleMania match. Um, yeah, I think you could do that at Survivor Series. You could do that at SummerSlam. You could do it. It could be a headliner for another type, another major pay per view. I don't know about WrestleMania with all the other possibilities they could have at their disposal. I think that um, HBK Triple H would blow that match out of the water. Only you don't think that Steve Austin, the biggest, uh, the most popular wrestler in the late '90s and early 2000s, coming back 
would it be a WrestleMania caliber match? No, I, no, I gotta say I don't think so. Only because Rock Cena is happening tomorrow. Uh, as as popular as Austin is, he's not as popular as The Rock. As popular oh, as I, him, oh, I, no, I wouldn't go that Rock far. Is, uh, no, I mean, in fact, I I disagree. No, 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 no. In general, to the outside world, he is not that. Like that's the big draw. Of the Rock is well, the, but he's, he's more popular in, in, in the wrestling circle. I, I don't, I, I don't know yeah. if I agree with that. No, I'm just the outside. wrestling circle is as far, particularly for what he did and what he meant. I mean, nobody touched him. I mean, <laughs> he destroyed. I mean, he put Hogan to shame when Austin was in his prime. No, no, that, that's true. I'm saying to to basically bring someone out of retirement uh, as far as mainstream Hollywood showbiz appeal. The Rock is larger than Austin. All right. I, if you're looking at it that way, that's fine. Yeah, and, and from inside the wrestling world, as far as the larger fan base, I gotta say maybe Cena might be bigger than CM Punk. If not, it's close. And I gotta say, if this match happened at WrestleMania, it would just be compared to tomorrow's match the entire time to tomorrow's build up about the entire year, how these two did it. And I, I gotta say, with Joe doing it for a different pay per view, that's probably the smart move because then you're not drawing that same parallel of yet another guy. From five ten years ago, I was coming out of retirement to to wrestle another guy who's really popular right now, and we get to hear about it for an entire year. Yeah, that one, I, that one, I will agree with. I, I don't have a problem with doing it in another pay per view. I just disagree with the original comment that it couldn't be Stone Cold if they wanted it to. Yeah, I mean, and who's gonna get, who's got the biggest build up of all for WrestleMania? Maria Menounos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is she even gonna be there? Because she's still injured, right? The reporter, yeah, yeah, she's, who's supposed she's to done. be who's supposed to be in the Divas match. Yeah, she's done. She's right? there. No, she's in. She's there. She's gonna. She's there. Up. Yeah. I thought she busted. Yeah, she'll up hobble out something. That Dancing with the Stars, because that's yeah. what we were talking about Tuesday. Yeah, the thing is, I don't see them well. wanting to put Stone Cold in that same situation that just that they just put The Rock because of how half of the crowd only back The Rock. You know, yeah. they they want to if 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 they bring something back like that, it's to get. And ex- a lot of excitement, and you saw that we weren't really that excited <laughs> about The Rock coming back, especially because we knew it was going to be for just that one match. So to do that to The Rock was, you know, one thing. They should learn from that mistake and not make it again with Stone Cold, regardless of the crowd support he has. So, I, mean, I, I think there's a big difference between Steve Austin and The Rock. Steve Austin left due to injury. The Rock left to, you know, go to Hollywood, and th- there was always that, uh, that, that kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That possibility. That people, uh, people kind of resented The Rock oh, yeah, for that, leaving. Yeah. That sense of betrayal. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and with, with Steve Austin, I think it would be a big hero's return if he came back for one match and uh, kind of and passed the torch to the next guy, whether it be CM Punk or John Cena, but I, my, I, I, and I, I don't, I don't think you can put that on a Survivor Series or a SummerSlam or anything. I, it, it's just too big for me. Steve Austin coming back is just too big. If you make I, Austin CM Punk uh, a WrestleMania match, I, I don't think you can book it a year in advance because I think oh no, Austin no. has the big drawback that The Rock has. He has a very select few catchphrases and uh he has a very yeah, he get singular all- promo style whereas CM Punk is much like John Cena. CM Punk can can come up with new stuff all year long. Yeah. Austin yeah. has pretty much his set lines. Yeah, I mean yeah. And and really Austin Austin is I mean what is left for what was left for Austin to do? There's really nothing. I mean I the, yeah. I think he's truly run his course. I mean the yeah. only draw here with Rock is the fact that he's Hollywood. Yeah, and, no, and, and Austin left at the perfect time. Granted, partially due to injury, but yeah, you, Joe, Joe's exactly right. He, Austin doesn't have anything else to prove. It was time, and he walked away, and now he makes his you know occasional pop and appearance. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but I but I do agree with uh, uh, Mike in, in theory. I mean, they left for completely different reasons. Austin left due to injury, and as big as Rock's fan base was. There was always that kind of like sense of betrayal when Rock decided, well, I want to be a movie star rather than be a pro wrestler. Yeah. And, and he just completely washed his hands of the wrestling business for 
a good four or five years too. I I think that left a bad taste in people's mouth. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm glad Cena took that route with the promos. I just wish he would have gone farther with it because it is a really good point. Anyway, it's like burning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so the- well, it's it's it's, it's kind of sad though with the with the route that Cena went because they took uh, they took the Rock being a movie star and turned that into a diss on him. Well. It- yeah, but that's like the only way they could really. Uh, that's the only way I could think they could really go with it to build heat between these two. You can understand why. Like, and what really annoys me is that we didn't really get good motivation for The Rock to do this until recently. Uh, so basically, that I mean, Austin CM Punk. I mean, it'd be interesting if it happens. It'll be interesting to where they take it. But I got to be honest: is there anybody who would look at it that isn't going to be basically kind of cautiously optimistic? Uh. Like I said, for me, it would depend on when they do it. If they try to, if, if they try to put Austin CM Punk a year in advance, I'd be very cautiously optimistic, somewhat pessimistic. All right, Kevin. It depends, it depends on the timing when they announce it. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of in Rob's camp here. I, you know, I, I I would definitely be interested in seeing the match because I think it would be outstanding. The wrestling styles work very similar. I, I think it would be a good one, but I'm with Rob. I don't think this year long buildup has worked. I think it's been too long. I don't think it's a good idea for them to try it again. Six months, maybe. But if they, if they want to announce it a year ahead of time again, I, I don't think this is a good idea. Okay. Mike. Uh, I, I think it'd be good. Remember, uh, back at WrestleMania 20, when Nick Foley fought, uh, Randy, or it was Foley in the Rock for Evolution. They started planting seats for it throughout the year. Like Foley would show up in June, and you know Randy Orton would kick his ass, and you'd see Foley would come back again in October, and you know Randy Orton would throw him down the stairs, and it, it, it just all kind of like built up, and then eventually in you know January or February, Foley was back full time, and they were able to like announce a match for WrestleMania. I, I would like to see a build up like that instead of saying you know coming out. Monday after Ron going, all right, these two are fighting next year. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd that's like to see more natural build up. Um. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, the other big uh, rumor, and it happens every single time with this guy, and I'm so sick of talking about it. Brock Lesnar is rumored to make an appearance at WrestleMania. Possibly this could be the big announcement for WrestleMania 29 next year him versus Taker. I am so jaded on the Brock Lesnar rumor thing showing up. I don't care if you retire from UFC this time. I am so jaded with this guy. Yeah, I agree. And, and I just, he has diverticulitis. I, I, I don't think he'd want to get the beat up, even if it was just one match, to have to risk having that come back. It, it can't be about the money to Lesnar. If it was, he would have stayed in UFC. I, I'm 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 with I'm with Harrison. I'm tired of the the, the stupid ass rumors about Lesnar. If it happens, I'll talk about it, Dan. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm with I'm with Kevin on this one. Fuck Lesnar. All right, uh, Mike. Uh, I want to see Lesnar come back. I was a big fan of him in WWE. I don't want to see him against Undertaker though. That's a match I don't think would. Uh, maybe five years ago, but I, I don't think it would hold up today. I don't think it. would. I, I don't really care to see it. Yeah. yeah, besides, he's already had his feud with Taker and beat Taker. Yeah. yeah. Just I, I'd rather see him. Lesnar do something with someone young, uh, you know, so someone that he could really give a rub to. Or Lord, someone that can carry him. Lord Tensei. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, or Lord Tensei. Play. Lord Tensei is uh, rumored to be uh, making appearance uh, because of uh, the vid- many video teasers. Although, uh, it, it, WrestleMania would be a really weird time to have him debut because Karma was being teased... But she didn't make her debut at WrestleMania. Same with Sin Cara. Yeah, same with Sin Cara, too. So, and it's just one of those things worth floating around. And uh, apparently there's going to be a tag team match before WrestleMania. It's going to be streamed online at WWE.com and then YouTube.com slash WWE, I believe. Uh, and it's going to be uh, the Usos versus Tyson Kidd and Gabriel versus Epico and Primo for the tag titles. So if you got free Wi-Fi at the library and you want to check it out, go knock yourself out. Uh and, uh, well, here we are. The WrestleMania 28 card. Um, it just start at the bottom, work our way up. Uh, Divas match, uh, which is kind of up in the air because with Maria uh, Menounos, uh, possibly injured, could wrestle, could not wrestle. Uh, Beth Phoenix and E versus Maria Menounos and Kelly Kelly. Uh, anybody really look, I mean, anybody looking for any huge surprises? I'm looking for sleep while it's going on. <laughs> 
I think the obvious uh, prediction that everyone's been throwing out as far as on the internets is the the return of karma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that would salvage this. Um, otherwise, it seems kind of boring straight up. Uh, that's, a, that's a great segue there. Speaking of predictions, uh, just to thwart Harrison for his comments on Thursday, uh, I get to make my predictions since WrestleMania hasn't happened. Ha! Eat it! All right, so fine. Which one are you going to take? Kelly Kelly. Uh, obviously, I should yeah. pick that one. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you want to get in on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm the odd man out. I'm going to go with uh, Best Phoenix and Eve. Really? You're going to pick the star is going to lose, huh? The celebrity? Kelly will take No, one. I think Kelly, Kelly's going to lose. Oh, uh, okay. That's fair. Uh, either way, I, I think this one's just going to be yeah, squash. Anyway, uh, Orton versus Kane. Uh, Wait, what What was my prediction? Your prediction, you took Maria. You took and Kelly and Kelly and Maria. Okay. That's what I thought. That's fine. That's you fine. have the duck. All right, anyway. Uh, I have it open. Orton versus Kane. Uh, I'm, I'm still... I really just I, I don't want this match on the card. I just I don't either. It's 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 like a last minute addition. Okay, Orton's back. We got to build some heat for SmackDown. Let's put him in WrestleMania. I think I, I think they were like we got to throw. It's what you guys talk about. We got to throw Kane a bone. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to see it either. I will be taking Kane. By the way, I'm going solo with Orton unless Mike's going to join me here. I, I, I'm predicting a no contest, no winner, double count out, or something. At WrestleMania. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I think they'll do some brawling, and I don't think you'll get much of a match out of them. All right, that's fair. Uh, team. Uh, and, well, and, and funny thing about that match too, last night on SmackDown, that was the only match for WrestleMania not to get a hype video. <laughs> they highlighted every single match on the card except for Randy Orton and Kane. Yeah. So, so what does that tell you about what they think about that match? Yeah, that's basically just filler. Uh, all right. So uh, for uh, GM Control, Santino, Kofi, Truth, Ryder, Kali, and Booker T versus uh, Otunga, Henry, Drew McIntyre, Ziggler, Miz, and Swagger. Uh, it seems like everybody is on the. Uh, Everybody's team. going team. Yeah. Team Johnny, except yeah. for Rob. You're going. With- I, will, I will also be taking Team Laurinaitis. You're taking Laurinaitis. Okay. See, for me on this match, it just seems strange that they would stack the deck that much not to push a win for them. It would be, it just seems odd for, you know, to have all the former champions that they have on that team, all the veterans that they have on that team versus, you know, I don't know, it seems like they're mostly pushovers. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same point in time, I can't count the number of times I've seen WWE do something like this where they stack the odds. Or it's like, okay, there's no way these guys are going to win. And then they win. Yeah, but at the same time, that doesn't really happen at WrestleMania. That's the kind of thing that happens at, like, Royal Rumble or Survivor Series or something like that. That's usually when the under- the underdog, the, the clear underdog wins at WrestleMania. It, it seems like it's a rare occurrence when that happens at WrestleMania. At the same time, oh, look at what happens next. Do you want Teddy Long to be the GM of both shows. I mean, we've we've complained and complained and complained yeah, about he's him. so vanilla. How awful he's been. Besides his his suits, suits have been fantastic. Yes. He's but leader. him as a leader, not so great. And I think that's been a common theme. Regardless yeah. Who's, who's saying it, if it's us or if it's, you know, else think, on the internet. Yeah, you guys make a good point. I think I'm going to change my pick, and I will take uh, Team Johnny as well. Screw you, Garvin, for making Rob do that. <laughs> this could have been the part where he loses, and then Joe and I pick up a win, and then we have a three-way tie. And possibly Kevin. Anyway, Mike, who are you taking? Am I the only one taking Team Teddy, then? Yep. I guess you are, yeah. I, you are now, I, yeah. I, I, I look at Team Johnny, and yeah, they, that is the better team on paper. But look at the guys on the team who have been having a losing streak gimmick going on. You know, Jack Swagger, The Miz, Drew McIntyre, they've been losing week after week. It's really David Otunga, Dolph Ziggler, and you know, just recently Mark Henry started winning again. Uh, I, 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 I just I, I have a gut feeling Team Teddy's going to win. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I think they, I think they like Teddy Long as the GMs, and I, I don't mind him as much. Uh, I think they could do like a good power play give a good, like feud between him and Johnny. You know, Johnny Lord and I just trying to get power again. 
Yeah, I, I, I could see that uh, if only they didn't have the storyline going forward. If this was just the one match and there was no storyline afterwards, I'd probably agree with you, Mike, because especially when you look at it as far as like the best way to kind of catapult guys like Zack Ryder and Kofi Kingston, two wins for them over guys like Miz, Ziggler, uh, Swagger, guys who can really get the crowd against them. I mean, that's that's an easy way to catapult them out of WrestleMania, but I just can't see Teddy Long. I just can't see them giving up Laurinaitis as GM. I mean, so, I mean, Lauren, I, let's say Laurinaitis becomes the GM, and then Teddy Long, a.k.a. Dixie Carter, can try and fight to get the company back. <laughs> 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 All right, Cody Rose versus Big Show for the IC Championship. Now, um, Joe was the only one who took Big Show. Everybody else is taking, seeing, thinks Rhodes is going to retain. Because Big Show is... They're making terribly. Well, they're making a big deal about how Big Show keeps doing stupid shit and losing at WrestleMania. I think this is where they turned around. Yeah, I'm actually with Joe. Yeah, and I'm going to change my vote. I I'm, I'm the I'm in the same opinion. Like they it, it's kind of strange that they would build him up to be a loser not to you know to to continue that theme through WrestleMania. I I think it would be epic if if show needs to win a lot more than Cody does. Yeah. That's the way that I look yeah, at right. it. Right. Yeah, if you look at this, that's that's agreed upon. You know, because for Big Show to lose, it basically I, I think that equates to his career being a, a big failure. He hasn't really done anything. You you had uh, Rhodes earlier. You're switching. I'm switching. Yeah. Okay. So Rob, that leaves you alone with Cody Rhodes. You can stay with Cody Rhodes. No, I'm going to switch. Too. Okay, so we're all switching basically. <laughs> I'm wow. Sw- I, I'm switching because I got uh, Rob and Garvin. Uh, I'm switching because uh, thinking about it, I was like, well, they could easily push it to next year, but then I thought, there's no way that they're going to push the storyline next year. It just doesn't have the legs for it. The fact that Big Show hasn't, if they bring it up now, there's a reason for it. It's not like they're bringing it up now so they can point out, hey, he lost again. Now next year, there's even more pressure. This isn't them. Yeah, no, to win. So there's this is like, yeah, it's like Taker Streak. He's always going to lose. Who's gonna, when is Big Show going to break the tree? Uh, no. Taker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, the overtaker. <laughs> yeah, this just this this uh, gimmick, whatever you want to. That be the overgiver or a big show. It, it just does not have the legs to last a year. So that's why I'm switching. Uh, all right. So next up, it, next up is uh, CM Punk versus Chris Jericho for uh, what is going to be honest. I mean, the WWE Championship. Um, everybody but Rob picked Jericho. Anybody got any thoughts on this match? We're going to switch. I will be taking Jericho. Yeah, I'm happy with my pick on this one. So, Rob, right. you want to put match of the night right here? Rob, I'll call it right now. With your pick and pick Jericho. No, uh, on this match, I'm going to stay with my pick of CM Punk. I'm. It, 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 that's the thing because I'm. I'm. I, I, I'm. I'm taking Jericho, but barely. If Punk retains, I wouldn't be surprised either. But he's had it for a long time. I think they want to get it off him. And this is the point. If they're going to do, a con- if they're going to continue the Jericho Punk storyline, he has to win. Jericho's got to win, or else it's dead. It is dead. After that, after that, you've got to move Jericho onto something else, or have him go away again. Yeah, he's gotta- and he's not going away because he just resigned. Yeah, he just that. extended his contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. I- I, I thought he has a big uh, tour with Fozzie coming up at the end of April. Of yeah, April. that's that. That was the original thought as well, but. Um, What's being said right now is that he, he extended it into, into the summer, so maybe his last match might be like at a SummerSlam type of thing. And then he goes on tour with Fozzie? I yeah. don't know. So, uh, so, Rob, you sticking with CM Punk then? I am. Okay. Mike, who are you taking? I'm going to take CM Punk. Ooh. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> you guys are getting dusty. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that this match needs to go 20 minutes to get that four or five star match that we're looking for. Uh, if they cut them down and say we're giving you fifteen minutes, you know, eighteen minutes with entrances, I think it'll fall flat like that uh Jericho Edge match from a few years ago that people thought would be a great work rate match and ended up falling a little flat due to uh time constraints. I'd be really surprised if they cut it down. Well uh, I mean it's it, plus, it's been plus yeah. Look at it this way. It's Jericho and Punk. Do you think they're going to be like, nah, we're not doing that. We're just doing whatever the hell they want. I wouldn't be surprised if they honestly just said that. Like, no, this is our match. What are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, send Simon Dean down to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think Mike's, Mike's got a point. It, it really, I, I could see time constraints depending how deep into the card this match is. But uh, if it's like one of the last three or four matches, I mean, you got to think what's ahead of it. That the Laurinaitis long match, and that thing could run. I mean, you got ten bodies in the ring. That thing could go long. So, no, interesting to see. Uh, all right, so Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus for the World Championship. Uh, all of us except for Rob basically agree that Daniel Bryan's got to keep the title in order to keep his um, keep any kind of heat. Uh, yeah, too many limes, too, too many, many limes. limes. Uh, so, uh, uh, Kevin, who are you taking? Yeah, yeah, I, I gotta take Bryan. Yes, yes, yes. Because wow. Famous? That was like the best response to me picking something. <laughs> Daniel Bryan imitation, man. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like someone to follow me around like at a restaurant every time I make a decision like that. Then I'll uh, I'll have the steak. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, AJ. That, that, uh, that, that's it's funny. That's actually the reason I think that Bryan's going to win is because I think they want to keep this AJ thing going a little bit longer as well. And they, you know, yeah, I I, I got to take Bryan. I think the AJ thing will continue even if AJ is part of the re- – let's say she accidentally causes That's an issue thinking, yeah. for Daniel Bryan and Sheamus picks up the win. But Yeah, the, 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 this, the, the AJ thing is not going to stop regardless of uh, – The thing that happens. bothers me about this match is that there's no buildup between Daniel Bryan and Sheamus specifically. There's buildup of Daniel Bryan and there's some seemingly work on Sheamus, but it's not – Sheamus they're not has building to, to a point. They're yeah. just kind of building in their own columns. Yeah, that, that's yeah. why I'm thinking Daniel Bryan retains, because they haven't built this match as a match. They've just built these guys separately. And it's like, well, if that's the case, Daniel Bryan probably holding the gold has more heat on him, even with the abusive boyfriend a- angle, uh, with, the, with the strap than he does without it. Because at least then he's, you know, he's credible as a wrestler because he has the championship. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I'm going with Sheamus on this one. Oh, even after all that, you disagree? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Sheamus can win, and I see Brian, you know, blaming AJ for the loss, and maybe even I, I don't think dumping her, but yeah, uh, there, there are so many different ways this can go. I'm with that. That's why I picked Sheamus, and I, I mean, I'm with like, I mean, you can have AJ try to interfere and accidentally end up costing Brian the win or something. I mean, there. I, I, I think Brian's built his character up enough where he doesn't need the championship yep. to right. justify it. had AJ stand up to Brian and turn her into a mega face diva if, if, if such a thing exists. But to have him want her to get in the way of a bro kick and she tells him, no, you know, you tell him you love me or I'm not getting in the ring. And you know, he stands up to him, I think it would be a great WrestleMania, WrestleMania moment. Yeah, I, yeah. I got to be honest, Mike. We, we were talking about this on Tuesday, and, and that's one point I brought up is that I'm like, if anything, I would like to see AJ take whatever happens at WrestleMania and start to push herself, like kind of stand up to Dana Bryan, and, and something happens at WrestleMania and she starts standing up to him. So if it is a loss, so be it. I just think that Daniel Bryan without the belt is a very, very weak character at this po- at, at this point. Um, yeah, I think he would get lost on the shuffle. Exactly. Even with, even with this AJ storyline, I think there's potential there for AJ to get like such a catapult if she manages. Even if it isn't at this, if it's at Raw or whatever, I think like you're saying, man, like go to like I mean, she could be the next super face diva kind of thing because Eve's kind of falling on the wayside. Kelly Kelly is so tired. I, yeah. I, th- I think AJ could really stand up to it. Uh, all right, so. Here it is. Last two big matches that we've all been talking about for months. Undertaker versus Triple H. Every single one of us that was on on Tuesday said that Taker's going to win. They don't. Taker's. Taker. Taker, you're taking Taker. Wow, you're picking against Triple H? It's Undertaker at WrestleMania. It, well, is this the match that breaks the streak? I mean, that, that's that's the thing. I mean, Ke- so Kev says now, Mike, what do you think? I, you know, every year I say to myself that Undertaker is going to win, and every year I'm right. And every year something happens during the match that you know makes me think, oh, holy crap! You know, they're so they're ending the streak this year. You know, holy, sh-, you know, and then he kicks out of whatever. And this year I'm looking at the buildup, and for the first time ever, I have like a shadow of a doubt that the Undertaker might lose. Uh, I, I'm predicting him to win, but this year I think WWE's been done an excellent job of stacking the deck and making it look like he's vulnerable and might lose. Yeah, yeah, it, it's much better this time around than it was last year. Last year, yeah. 
from my standpoint anyway, like you were saying, it, it was a lock that Taker was going to win. Because, I mean, Triple H's first time, even though he's like, all right, I'm going to do what you couldn't do, it was like, it's like, it's not going to happen. Like, like last year when he hit that tombstone on Undertaker, I, I thought, holy crap, they're ending the streak right here. Yeah, that'd be epic. No, no one ever has tombstone the Undertaker. Came to Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, but that was his finish. Yeah, that was his finisher, too. Well, that's the thing. Like, I've always said that if any match for me as a fan would be the last match for The Undertaker at WrestleMania, it would be Kane in a casket match. I, I can't think of it any more perfect than that, other than HBK, but they already he's retired, and I don't want him back. So it's like, as far as storyline and purposes, Kane versus Taker in a casket match at WrestleMania, that's my dream final. This breaks the streak, and Taker is retired. Either casket match or buried alive match. No, oh, buried alive. The last one they did was terrible. Maybe it was That's just because he ran out. What That's about a bear on a pole match? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Do you guys think there's going to be a blood in the match? This one? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 There's going to be hell in a cell. Yeah. There will be rivers of blood. It, even but though it's a big no, no. I think. With the fact that it's both Triple H and Undertaker, I think that they will go against what they're supposed to do. They can eat the fine easily. They're yeah. not going to be fired. You know, you, you look at what they did last year, and there were chair shots to the head, and they supposedly got fined for those. So, I, I think I think there'll definitely be blood this this match. Oh yeah. Now, now what, what kind of role do you guys think Shawn Michaels is going to play? I think he's going to end up. He's going to end up super kicking everybody, and then somebody's going to take him out. <laughs> no, I think he's going to be one of those guys. I think he's going to be like. I think what's going to happen is, uh, like Darvin said, these two are going to like really like go to town on each other, blood and everything. And I think at some point, Shawn Michaels is going to be like screaming at the two of them at one point to just someone lay down and get pinned. You can't keep it. Like be like the voice of reason, like how Triple H was last year, telling Taker just stay down. I think at some point, you know. HBK is going to be telling Triple H to stop, just lay down, just take the loss or something like that. Mm-hmm. Just blood everywhere, and this match is just going to be... I mean, I, 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 gotta, I gotta be honest. I know that we were constantly turning our nose up at all the gimmicks being thrown at this. The closer that we're getting, this is the one match I'm looking at going, this could be the one that we're going to be talking about for months. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, for some reason, I just, just in the back of my head, I'm thinking this is going to be the match that's going to be like... Triple H, it's going to be like Taker versus Mankind, Hell in a Cell, where it's just like that unbelievable moment where you're just like, holy shit. And then from now on, whenever we talk about this kind of match, that moment is in your head. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so uh, Cena versus The Rock. It's been a year. We're almost done, guys. We're, we're there. It, you know, it's just like it's senior year. We're almost there. Graduation's coming, and then we don't have to talk about this anymore. Uh, except when the DVDs come out, which they're gonna fucking come out. Cena versus Rock. Uh, all of us except for Rob picked The Rock. And we talked about this ad nauseum, so I'd like to cut that short and instead let Kevin and Mike talk about their thoughts on this match and the build-up and things like that. Because we spent like, oh god, it was like a half hour on just this yeah, we match. Did. Yeah, At least, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Kevin, Rock versus Cena, who are you taking and what are you thinking? Rock. Um, and I agree with the comments that you guys had on the show, which was that I, this seems like a good way to possibly give Cena some time off. Um, I, I honestly could see Rock winning, walking out of the ring. Cena kind of struggles to his feet and maybe gets applause because, honestly, he's done a fantastic job. Yeah. And showing up the Rock, the best white man of all time. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I like the, I thought you're – the comments that you guys had during the show were really good, and I agree with those. Okay. Uh, all right, so, uh, Mike, who are you taking and why? Um, look, look at my picks for all the other matches on the card. With the exception of one, I have the faces going over every single match. I think John Cena is going to win tomorrow night, and to keep the crowd happy, they'll have the faces win every other match, and the, you know they'll be able to say, well, you know, we... Sure, your guy lost this match, but you know the guys you were cheering for won every single other match. Um, kind of like they like they did with Hogan when he went to WCW back in the day. They had heels won every single match until Hogan came out and they had he was the you know the the babyface left standing. Um, 
Yeah, but the the problem with that comparison is that yeah, that, it, it, it's it's a bad comparison. But I I think that would, that would be like their their thinking going into well, it. Yeah, but the the problem with that comparison is that you had a bitter taste in your mouth until Hogan came out with yeah. your scenario and Cena winning. The uh, everything's going great until the main event. Yeah. And I got to and you know with the problem with that is that everybody's like tonight at, or tomorrow night when we're all done and then we talk about this on Tuesday and everybody walking out of the parking lot to their cars all they're going to be talking about is like you were saying, yes, bitter yes. taste in their mouths from Cena. So, yeah. are you sure you want to stick with that one? I mean, I don't want to pull. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I still think John Cena's going to win. I think okay. the, whole, the plan the whole time was for The Rock to to come back and put Cena over and you know, put, thrust that torch into his hand and de- declare him, you know, the the next big thing for WWE. Even though you know, you know John Cena's been around for ten years now. Yeah. But uh, with, with this match, I think there, with all the shoot comments that have been happening the last six weeks or so, this will be. One of those matches I think everyone's going to watch really closely to see what kind of subtle potatoes those guys might throw at each other or studying the body language from both guys. Um, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a, a really good, intense match. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I'll be really happy when it's over. The, this last year has just been exhausting of thinking about Rock and Cena, and especially the last two months or so in the build-up that it's been getting and the specials and yeah, all, yeah. The, you know, all, the, all the hype. Well, I'll, the, I'll, I'll be happy when it's done. Yeah, speaking of the hype, uh, Kevin and Mike, uh, we went on, basically, well, at least I, I took a lot of heat for saying it, but i, I got to be honest. Um, I personally, and I think a couple of people agree with me, that uh, of the two of these guys, uh, Cena came out on top on the mic, which was completely, I don't think anybody predicted, that you would be tired of The Rock before you were tired of Cena. Do you guys agree with that, or do you think that it's like now rock all the way, or it's about the same, or you're just jaded entirely? No, no, I agree. I think I think Cena came out on top in the end. Um, like I said, I think he kind of said, "I showed up the best Mike guy of all time," and it kind of showed after the comments about the the notes on his arm, and you know, and I think I think he did. I, I think Cena came out on top, and I mean, bottom line is. For me, at least, I, I've gained a ton of respect and admiration for Cena over the past year, way more than I thought that I ever would. Yeah. So and after after the CM Punk matches, which you know my biggest criticism was his ring work, and the CM Punk matches were really good, and now this, uh, you know, I, I'm still not calling myself a Cena fan, but I'm not actively booing him like I was before. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it, I, I mean, a yeah, lot. Oh I'll say a lot of people though are saying that, yeah, Cena seems to have come out on top, but he hasn't said anything. He hasn't said said generally in every single feud he's been in. Like he hasn't really stepped up his game. It's been Rock's been that bad. Oh, you know, aside from a few barbs like the writing on the wrist. Yeah. Aside from a few, a handful of things like that, it's really been standard fare for Cena. It just doesn't. Rock's not living up to his height. I, I thought Cena had a really good promo when he uh, cut the legs off from the Rock before the Rock even came out. He said, "You can make fun of this about me. You can make fun of that about me. You can say this." You, where he kind of beat him to the punch on what the Rock would say. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a really good promo. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I think I think Cena blew away the Rock on promos leading up to WrestleMania, and uh, I, I think what happened was you know, Cena knew he had a, a, a year and really worked on his promos and you know, thought about what he was going to say. And I, and I think The Rock kind of rested on his laurels, thinking, you know, I'm The Rock, I can go out there, and, you know, I I can show this kid up. You know, I was the biggest, you know, I, I was the best promo guy 10 years ago, 12 years ago, at the peak of wrestling. You know, I don't, I don't need to put as much work into it yeah. as I would have in the past. Yeah, absolutely. That was, that was basically my point of view, was that uh, it seemed like uh, Cena just wanted it more. Uh, proof, yeah. yeah, okay, so looking at WrestleMania, the card, uh, I've said that my match of the night is probably going to be Taker versus Triple H. Uh, real quick, just going to go one right down the list. What do you think is going to be your match of the night, Joe? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Triple H and... Uh, You're with me? Triple yeah, H Taker? Triple H Taker. All right. That's where all the, heat, that's where all the pop is. Okay, Garf? For storyline purposes, sure, but I think overall match quality... Is either going to be a you know a toss up between Punk and Jericho mm-hmm. and Brian and Sheamus, you know, despite the poor build up of 
Brian versus uh, Sheamus. Yeah. That's going to be a, that should be a fantastic match. Yeah, those are two solid, solid talents. Yeah, no, I, I'd be with you, but just like no, something in the back of my head. Uh, all right, uh, Rob. Uh, I'm going to say CM Punk Jericho. Okay, uh, Kev. Yeah, I'm with Rob Punk and Jericho. All right, Mike. Uh, Punk and Jericho are going to go. If they get a decent amount of time for their match, I think they'll put on the match tonight. Uh, if they go under 20 minutes, I think it'll be Undertaker Triple H match of the night. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can easily agree with that. Okay. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on and uh, basically close this out? We're all pumped about WrestleMania. It should be awesome. Uh, looking forward to uh, basically picking it apart and complaining about a bunch of stuff on Tuesday with you guys. It should be fun. Yep. So make sure if you are listening to us now that you tune in live on Tuesday night just to hear us bitch. And you can bitch with us. It'll be great. Uh, all right, uh, Mike, uh, real quick, anybody can reach it. You got, uh, what's your Twitter handle again? MJQPAC? Yeah, at MJCPACH. Uh, I'll be tweeting live tomorrow during WrestleMania. Uh, I'll be doing live tweets Monday during the Hall of Fame ceremony on Monday Night Raw. Uh, you can also read my reviews of Friday Night SmackDown every, every Saturday at, uh, pwtorch.com. Okay, excellent, man. Yeah, and, and they're always, always fantastic. Uh, as always, you can find this episode as well as our entire archive at FTWpodcast.com. You can hit us up at Facebook.com slash FTWpodcast, Twitter.com slash FTWpodcast, YouTube.com slash The FTW Podcast. You can send us a voicemail at 313-444-FTW4. That's 313-444-3894. You can send us questions, two questions, at FTWpodcast.com. Please rate us on iTunes. And don't forget to go buy a t-shirt because they're totally awesome and you have a body you need to hide from the environment. And yes. assuming from the opposite sex. And same sex. From all sexes. Nobody wants to see your naked body, Harrison. No, they don't. Especially not my any and outie. He's got two belly buttons and four nipples, so you take your test. Yes, I'm like a cow. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. WrestleMania, baby, yeah! Yeah, just, uh, just a few, uh, basically, what, another day and a half, basically. Awesome. All right, see you guys next time. Can't hear me. Yeah.